Today I'm going to show you how I turn this piece of scrap material. And this is just some form boards that I glued together, some 2x10s. And I'm going to show you how I turned it into this. This is a beautiful 3D United States Marine flag. And um, yeah, I'm going to take you step by step how I did it. And yeah, let's get started. Okay, first thing we got to do is write a quick little program. So we're going to go up here, create a new file. Standard fastest, we're going to be 36 wide by 18 high. And we're 1.5 currently thickness. Standard, and we're going to hit OK. Now, first thing we need to do is put a border around this. So we're going to create rectangle, and we're going to do 36 wide by 18 high, and hit Create. And then we're going to close that. We're going to highlight the rectangle, go up here to our centering tool, and center it on the project, and hit Close. The next thing we got to do is leave that highlighted. We're going to create an offset, and we're going to go 3 quarter inch outside, and yeah, outwards, and hit OK. So now we got the border. Now what we do is we're going to go ahead and get rid of this inner line that we made. And then we have to get our bit, figure out the bit. OK, now the bit we're going to use is a white side. We can close that. We can go to our tool paths, and we're going to do a pocket. Basically, we're going to highlight this, and we're going to do pocket that whole thing. Now we'll make sure our material says 1.5, hit the pocket. Now we need to change our bit, so we're going to remove that, and we're going to select, and we know that we have a, it's a white nose in mill surfacing bit, and the model is 6220, and that's what we're going to review today. And we just got to find it in here. White side, 6220. Here we go, right here. Spoil board cutter, 6220. And that's what we're going to try out today. And it's two inches in diameter. And we're going to leave all the speeds just like they have them. And go ahead and hit select. Now we're, we know it's on there. Cut depth. We need to change that. We're going to do an eighth inch at a time. So we're going to do 0.125. And we'll just type in eighth inch right there. And we'll type in the model of the 6220. And go ahead and calculate. Now we're going to preview it. Now I don't like doing it on a raster. So we got to change that. So we're going to. We're going to go ahead and delete this and do it again. We're going to reset the preview, hit close, hit pocket. It's got our bits still there, 0.125. So we want to do a raster back and forth. And let's put this back in there, 60 to 20, and hit calculate. That's much better. And see, it's just going to go back and forth. And I, I find that I have a lot smoother material that way. OK, we're going to hit close. Now, because I don't know if it's going to be able to smooth this out in one pass, we're going to do another pocketing toolpath, and this time we're going to put 0 0.25, and that'll take another eighth inch off. And we'll go ahead and put 0.25 down here, and we'll put the cutter bit to it, and go ahead and hit calculate. Now it's going past there, so this all looks good. Let's preview all. That's the first pass, and if we need a second pass, then we could do this next pass. Okay, let's close that. Let's highlight the tool pass. Let's insert our USB drive. Okay, let's go over and cut it. The first thing I do is, is I home the machine. I go through my checklist. I warm up the spindle. And then I start cutting this thing with this 6220 from Whiteside. And I must say it throws out a lot of chips, but um, I think if next time if I adjust my dust shoe to be a little, it, it had a little gap under the dust shoe, and I think I need to have it where the dust shoe is closer to the material. But it did uh, throw a lot of chips. And the surface is super smooth, so it did a really good job. And yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased with this cutter. It's a little hard to do the, the XYZ with the touch plate because the it's a two inch diameter bit and it barely fits in the middle of the touch plate. But it did a really good job and I see myself using this, this bit to um, surface like my big live edge slabs and stuff like that. It'll be, it'll be really handy for that. 
And you can see right there, it barely fits in there. It's two inch diameter. Here's a picture of what the bit looks like. Yeah, so I, surf I surface both sides, an eighth inch at a time. And what I've learned is this, the success of doing a 3D project is you really need to surface your material so that your material is in sync with the machine. And um, yeah, that turned out to work really well. Once I finish the one side, I flip it over and then I surface the other side. And I ended up having to do two passes on this side also, an eighth inch at a time. It was super smooth. There was no ridges, no lines. It worked out really well. Okay, now that we've got our material surfaced, we're going to go over to these tool paths and we're going to double check our measurements for, I think we're going to redo them. Okay, so we are one and five sixteenths. So we need to change this material to one and five sixteenths. And let's see what that calculation is. One inch five sixteenths. So we need one point point three one two five. That's our new thickness. Gap above model one point six eight. Gap below model. So we could change this because we're digging down a quarter inch. Well, no, I guess we want that to stay. Yeah, let's just leave it. Okay. So we're going to hit OK. Error, model thickness 1.3. OK. So let's change our model set thickness to 0.75 and hit Apply. And now gap above model is 0.56. Actually, I want to raise the model up. I want to raise the model up. There we go. And let's set that. New height. Current height. New height. Okay, so that model's right in there. And I think that's what I was trying to do. So it's like changing all these things must be... Yes. Okay, now we're going to go back. So that should take care of... So that takes care of the 3D roughing and the 3D finish. Now let's let's click out of there. Let's get our roughing pass for our pockets. And this is good. We gotta change that. Remove that. We need to select our RU22 RU2075. RU right there and hit select and I like to go on a raster and all that can stay the same let's type our name in there RU2075 and calculate okay next up we want to go back to our 2D view click out of that we need to do our V carve our stars so we're going to go over here and V carve and all of this stuff looks good. V carve. The model number is 1502. 90 degree, 0.5 on diameter. Okay, let's calculate that. Now we got all four. So we got 3D roughing. Now I'm going to move this pocketing tool path so we can do the, the 3D roughing and the pocket at the same time. Okay, let's preview all tool paths. Take a look. Yeah, I'm liking that. The only thing is these pockets. I think we need to add an eighth inch bit for these, but I don't currently have one. So maybe what we need to do is change that. Let's go back to this pot. Let's close this, reset the preview. Reset preview, close that. Let's click on our pocketing toolpath and let's switch it to an offset and calculate. Now let's preview those. 
Okay, those look a lot better. So we're going to run it like that. Okay, I think we're ready. Let me review. Let's check our material thickness. Make sure it's been changed over here too. 1.3125, it has. So we'll cancel that. Go back to our tooling. We are ready to save this. So let's close that. And let's save it. So we got our 3D roughing, our pocket roughing, our 3D finish, and our V-card. And we got them all highlighted. Let's save it. And we want to get rid of these. I don't want anything on here to mess me up. Okay, let's cancel and then hit save again. Marine Corps flag. Save. Okay, it's time to go cut. So let's go cut this thing out. The first bit I use is going to be the roughing toolpath, which is the RU2075. And I'll do two different things with this. I'm going to cut out the stripes, and then I'm also going to do the roughing tool pass on the 3D model. So this first pass is going to be the stripes. I XYZ it, home the machine, and I didn't need to do a spindle warm-up because I already ran the spindle doing the surfacing. So now we can cut, and the first cut is going to be these stripes using this tool, RU2075. And it makes pretty quick work with the stripes. Once the stripes are done, I can basically just load the next program for the 3D roughing toolpath. And I did this in a, in a raster, which is back and forth. But if I had it to do over again, I would do this particular run in an offset. Because what it was doing when it goes back and forth, it was ripping slivers. And I think it would have gone better if I would have done the roughing toolpath for the 3D model in an offset. And I'll definitely try that next time. Although everything ended up turning out really nice, but I could, I could tell that it, it probably would have been better to do that in an offset. Let me know in the description if you have any experience with that. Next up, we were going to load the V-carve and cut out the stars. And this is a 1502 white side, 90 degree, half inch diameter V car bit. And it does a nice job of the stars. There I'm doing the XYZ and I run the program. I like the way the V carve cuts out the stars. It does a really nice job. In the future, I might try to do some raised stars and that's it for the stars. Next up was our 3D finishing toolpath. And this is an Amana 46288 tapered ball nose. And it's an eighth inch ball nose. And it did a really nice job. I was pretty impressed with, um, there I do the XYZ and run the program. And I'm doing this on a raster, which is back and forth. And I, I found out that that's, as far as running the, the finishing toolpath, that seems to be the best way that I've found so far. And this is uh, sped up 20 times. Here's a different angle. And this thing took about four hours to complete. So I won't bore you with all that footage, but yeah, it did do a nice job. I had a little bit of cleanup in the end, but it cleaned up really well. Once I was done with the CNC work, I took my sander with a 220 grit and just lightly sanded up some of the edges. I then got out some light oak stain and proceeded to stain this flag. You could really start to see the detail in the 3D model. The, the eagle and the eagle's feathers, and it was really looking good. And here it is after being stained. I then put five coats of polyurethane on it, and here's what it looks like. Thanks for watching this episode of Outlaw Woodworking. I hope you enjoyed the video. 
on how I had turned a piece of scrap wood into a beautiful 3D flag. And this one is uh, dedicated to my nephew who is in the, in the Marine, he's a pilot in the Marine Corps. And um, yeah, anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, like the video, and I'll see you next time. Later. Thank you.